Okay, he says we're up and rolling, so we'll get rolling. Oops, somebody left my camera a little bit high. Let's see if we can lower that a little bit. Okay, I've got to get the OSU in there. Okay, tonight, what I'd like to do during the first hour primarily is a little bit of specific review of library resources and some of the ways in which we can find out information about the library. As a matter of fact, for those of you who went on the tour with us last time, there are a few of the handouts over there in the library that are new. And the way you can tell that they're the new ones, if you look on them, they say like this on the remote access to Pete that has the big yes at you. So those are the ones that have been updated. Now the others that are over there have been done earlier, but they're still current. But the ones with the big yes on them are some changes that have been made. And for instance, the remote access to the peak. I don't think the phone number's changed, but just in case, I'll zoom in on them here and let you see them. For remote access, uh, I better give you the bottom there. For Stillwater Remote Access, you can see those numbers and the different bug at which you'd be operating. And then in Oklahoma City, you can see those numbers. And they're both at 14, uh, Oklahoma City and Tulsa both, and they're both at 14.4. So 
So if you're trying to access Pete from a remote site, that's the information that you will need. I'm talking away from the mic, I know, because I switched over to the computer. <laughs> that's the information you need for remote access to Pete. I really don't know the answer to that. You know, it can go higher. I think uh, that the higher, it'll kick down to that rate, yes. Good. Okay, so when you want to uh, see the very latest information, for instance, on the hours of operation, he was talking about some of the changes last time. Basically, noon to 2 a.m. on Sunday, they've got some pretty late hours now, compared to what they had at one time. And Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 2 a.m. Friday, they shut down at 10 p.m. Saturday at 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So that's when librarians are there available to help you. We've got a pretty good set of hours now as far as being able to uh, access information there and have a librarian help you find it. Uh, there's a new one on the circulation desk and on being able to uh, renew there are new ways in which you can renew information. Uh, they have telephone, email, and internet, which I'll give you here. There's the phone numbers for the circulation desk, fat, fax, mule phone, and email renewals, because you can now renew books by email. Which I think is kind of neat. And they even have a uh, handout which tells you how to do that. In fact, I think I've got a copy of it here. Everybody get a chance to get what they wanted off of that. <laughs> I won't flip it off too quick for you. But I'll just wipe these out from under. Second period, I'll try to get up on the internet and we'll uh, show you the AGIF 5980 homepage and the link that we've got to the library homepage. So you can go through there and, or you can kind of, well, no, there isn't a link. And I'll have to give and put a link from the internet, uh, from the library homepage to our AGIF homepage. <laughs> so we can go both ways. But right now, you can go from the AGIF homepage to the uh, library homepage. Okay, talking about renewal, five ways to renew books. One, you can do it in person just like we always did. Renew by phone, and I just gave you the phone number a moment ago, but there it is again, 9741. Renew up to 10 books per day, a lot of books. Renew by email, and you have to list the barcode number. And you can renew by internet, and barcode number. And you can renew books by uh, a list, you can fax and mail or go in person. They've gotten very flexible and user friendly, you might say.
One other thing that he mentioned last time was interlibrary loan and getting materials by interlibrary loan. That is a good way to get materials, but make sure that you have plenty of time because it does sometimes take a lot of time. Regular delivery, five to 10 working days, rapid three to five, rush 48 to 72 hours, don't count on it. Especially for some of the things that you're probably gonna want, like dissertations, they take longer. Matter of fact, they can take up to uh, four to six weeks sometimes. But again, they, they can try to get them as quickly as possible and so work with them over there. Uh, Again, you can go in on the net and find out more about them, or if you want to call them, or in your library loan, their number is 9727, Excuse me, sir. Yes. 
ahead. This is uh, this is Ray Pierce down here at Carlisle State College. Yeah. Uh, uh, Charlie Hayes is both. We had a call from Charlie, and he said he'd be late tonight. Did you copy? So he should be coming in after a little bit. Okay, let's do a quick review here on library resources and access to them. Where do you find the catalog? Catalog is named Pete, it's electronic. But is there a manual card catalog? Did both, which is what they should do. They did the 
electronic searching, they did the print searching, and they found some things in the print, but they didn't find the electronic search. Sometimes those can be very valuable. So I strongly encourage you to do both print searching as well as electronic. We do have the automated resources, online and CD-ROM. He demonstrated a little bit of the CD-ROM searching. It was here last time. What's online? Internet? Well, yes, internet might be considered online, but there is another way of doing it other than internet. And it is an online service primarily by two providers, one in New York and one in San Francisco, that have all these databases and allow the librarians and others to search those electronically for a price. Cost a little bit. Well, no, now you're still on internet with Metacross. But Metacrawler does search possibly some of the same resources, but it's not, it's a different way. So what I'm, the only reason I'm telling you that, and we used to depend on this before we got into internet as much, uh, is that there is an alternative in case you don't find something through the internet or you're unable to locate it. And again, you may find some things online uh, that you wouldn't find through internet. Most likely, you will find through electronic searching of CD bases or network that we've got in the library. If you're searching that particular base, you'll find it here in the library. But there may be some bases that they've got that are not in our library CD net. So you may want to search online. For instance, those of you who went over to the library, what did you find as one of the resources in the library that I, I said very few people knew about it, and yet it'll do something for you nothing else can do. Mm -hmm. What were they? <laughs> what was that called? <laughs> Where do you go, Tony? Right on target, what you're looking for. But you 
can't find anything since then. Go to the social sciences, assuming you're social science. Citation index, look at King in the more recent ones. See who is citing him. Look at those articles, and those should be people that are writing a very similar thing to what he was doing and doing similar research. We can move forward without using the science citation index and the social science citation index. That's the only tool over there that will allow you to do that. Not very many people know about that. And Dan said that uh, probably, he didn't say that, but I would say that you probably want to find him to help you through that one because he knows that pretty well. And not very many of the librarians really know how to use that social sciences and science citation index as well as he does. So you may want to look him up if you want to use that. It, does, it is a little tricky, and he can show you how to use it and find what you're looking for. The science one has been updated. Social science one's about a couple of years out of date. It can be searched online. That's the reason I was talking about it now, because the online searching, you can search those online. Don't know whether they're on the internet. I don't think they are. Okay, let's go through a few of the, the uh, sources that are automated. This is just showing you some in the different areas. The ABI inform for uh, business, curricula for agriculture. Applied Science and Technology in the Technology Area, Dissertation Abstracts, All Areas of Graduate Study, Direct for Education, Psychology for Psychology, the GPO Monthly Catalog for Government, and Statistical Master File Government. So these are some representative resources for each of those areas. Now what we'll do, we'll go into agriculture and look at the ones that are there, and we're going to business and look at some there in education. So we'll look at some more, but these are probably the primary ones in each of them. Okay, we got down the needle. Okay, agriculture. The automated uh, agricola, biological abstract, CAB, which is British, and congressional national. Now, in each of these, we also have the print resources. Remember, I told you you probably need to search print as well, because the agricultural, uh, no, uh, biological and agricultural index is the basis for agricola. It's in print as well as on the uh, electronic. Yep, same thing. Yep, same index. There's some others that aren't on, for instance, the Census of Agriculture and Oklahoma Ag Statistics. Dealing with agriculture, that Oklahoma Agricultural Statistics doesn't trade things you may want to use there. Education. <coughs> Here. Dissertation abstract. Like this. Some others that are not on there again. American Educational Research Association Journal, full of research done across the nation. I mean, Eric, you've got the RIE and the CIJE, that's Resources in Education and Current Index of Journals in Education, that are both in print. Review of Education Research. I might want to put a star by that. You find that they have reviewed the area that you're working in. They have 
have done most of the work for you on a review of literature. But they have reviewed the studies and literature in that particular area. And that review of education index, you can go through it. I'm not sure whether it has an index to it. I haven't seen an index to it. It would be nice if it did have. Uh, but if you can find the area that you're working in, outstanding researchers review for that. Education index, similar to CIJE, but a more limited group of uh, document or uh, journals, but again, worth looking at because there are some in there that may not be in CIJE. Pathology, sociology, and education abstracts, and then social science citation index. print resources. Dr. King, tell us about. Dr. King, where are I? Good. Glad you got it. 
Sprint Resources, the uh, Statistics Index, the CIS, Congressional Information Service, and again, these have their uh, counterparts. But let's see, uh, Index to International Statistics is not on the automated, but it is on print. Monthly Catalog is on automated and print. And Statistical Reference Index. There are a few other print resources. We talked about books in print, and he showed us that last time on the uh, electronic. Where was it? Was it on the internet? I'm trying to remember where it was now. But he showed us that on, and I think it was internet. Him with the book index, I throw in there, and the librarians laugh because they don't use it that much, but. A community book index is a listing of all the books that have ever been printed in the English language. So it's pretty, pretty thorough, pretty extensive. If you're ever hunting a book, it'll be in there. Okay, so it was internet. Yes, first search on internet. So you can get books in print on internet. That's right, the APA style name will be found on first search too. Okay, encyclopedias naturally, guide to microforms in print. While well, I'm thinking of microforms, I'll tell you in just a minute. Uh, microform room is where the tapes for the class will be. Library of Congress catalog, reader's guides, and periodicals directory. Okay, uh, while well, I'm thinking about it before passes by and gets out of the ROM or the RAM of this computer. <laughs> uh, the tapes for the class here at OSU are in the library in the non-book room or what's now called the microphone room. So you can go over there and you can view them there. If you have need otherwise, we will have a copy and we can uh, let you make a copy or something. Other than that, they are available in the library. I understand they're also available in the library at OKC. And I'm not sure about their Tulsa, but I know they're taping it, so we probably got them available there too. We will try to make them available to you as uh, needed to meet your requirements. Okay, are you ready to take your quiz? Things got solid. <laughs> Turn page 30 in your syllabus. And you've already done your quiz, right? I mean, I'm sure everybody already has. These are some of the print resources <coughs> asking you to match up where they, uh, what they have in them. You might go through this and see uh, how well you've learned what's in each of these items. And if you uh, have a question about it, if you turn back to the front of that particular module on the library, they're matched up in the front. So you do have a key to the quiz. But it lists some things that we have not talked about uh, in the other sources that you might want to take a look at. And you might also see if you can figure out where each one of those things is in the library. When we have time, I like to go through there and, and see how many of you know where things are and what they are. But our time is fleeting, so I guess I better keep going now. I would like to go ahead and talk a little bit about the Eric system uh, in a little more detail on Eric. Again, vocational what? 
taking a what? Educational Research Information Center? Close. <laughs> Educational Resources Information Center. As a matter of fact, it was called the Educational Research Information Center at one time. But they changed the name of it because they include more things than just research. And so they've got curriculum and other things as well. It is an educational information system. It's begun when? He talked about it. The reason I asked that question, normally we don't hear that, that date, but he mentioned it. 1966. <coughs> It is a retrieval dissemination system. There are 16 clearing houses that retrieve information on a specific subject. Each one of those 16 clearing houses has a specific subject for gathering information. They have various means of contacting universities, state departments, other institutions and people uh, to get the information. Then they put it in the information system, which is disseminated through two print resources. And of course, you've already uh, seen that it is on electronic, uh, the CD as well. But the print resources are the resources in education, RIE. That lists all sources other than journals. We'll look at in a minute what might be included in those. And then the CIJE, which is Current Education Journals. And we'll look at that in a little more detail, too. And then, of course, now it's on an automated database. Clearing houses. I'll just run through them to give you an idea of what is there. Health and Career and Vocational Education, which quite a few of you are in, involved with. Ohio State University. Assessment Evaluation, Catholic University. Where's that? DC. Community Colleges, UCLA, Counseling and Community Services, University of North Carolina, Greensboro. I'm not going to give you time to copy these, but if you do want more later, uh, let me know and I'll put them back up. I'll give you a copy of copy off of Disabilities and gifted children. The Council for Exceptional Children. Educational Management in Oregon. I'll give Lisa time to get elementary and childhood education. University of Illinois. <laughs> Any good elementary principal would have that, right? Higher Education, George Washington. Information Technologies in Syracuse. And language and Linguistics is in Washington, D.C. What? Who makes the choice of who becomes a clearinghouse? Actually, that choice was made when the system was set up. And I don't know whether they were let out for bid. Basically, I think what they did is they chose those sites that were primarily working in that area at that time. Since then, some of them have changed because another site may have become primary. And so it, it's part of the government uh, funding, too. It's government funded. So to receive the funds, they have to be invited, of course. And so uh, that's primarily where uh, those are. Reading English and Communication in Indiana. Rural Education in Small Schools, West Virginia. Science, Mathematics, and Environmental Ed, Ohio State. Social Studies, Social Science, Indiana. Teaching and Teacher Ed, AACTE, DC. And Urban Ed, Teachers College, Columbia. Resources in education. This is the print source. You'll find abstracts, resource reports, government publications, conference papers, curriculum guides, association publications, some dissertations, very few, but some, and some books, but very few again. But it primarily is on other reports that aren't of 
available in other sources. They don't try to repeat what's done in dissertation abstracts, for instance, on the dissertations. And they don't try to repeat what's done in books on book resources. But some get in there because they specifically apply to education and area points in the system to uh, be available that way. The way you get documents, other than journal articles, through the ERIC system, if you want a copy of it, you take the ED number, that's a six digit number, the smaller the number, the older the source, the larger the number, the larger the, or the more recent the source, you can take it to the microform room of the library. OSU is a holding institution for all of the ERIC documents, for almost all. And you can get a copy of it on microfish. You can make a copy of that microfish and take it home with you if you want it. Maybe it costs like 10 or 15 cents. You may make hard copies of pages from that microfish. I think they run about 10 cents a page, too. Need it bad enough, it's there. You also can get hard copy from Eric through the reproduction service. That takes long. If you've got plenty of time, you can get a hard copy for your name. The IJE looks a little different. Those that are in journals. It is a monthly index to articles in more than 800 journals. You have the EJ numbers that identify the abstracts, and you can get those on your uh, electronic searching. But in order to get the article, you must go to the journal. So the abstract will list the journal, the pages, and so forth, the volume. You must find the journal in order to get the article. 44 OSU doesn't have a journal. And you have a library alone or find a library that does. It's getting so that you can search and find those articles in through the internet and through your electronic means and actually read the article on your computer. You can be innovative if you can find it. So if you can't find it here, try uh, the uh, internet, do some searching, you may find it. Any questions about Eric? was if you have to publish something in ERIC, does it have to go through one of the clearing houses? And the answer to that is yes. You can submit it to one of those clearing houses, whatever one the uh, subject is best. Okay, the question was uh, where to find first search, and the answer, which some of the students remembered, was that it was on the library homepage. Uh, actually, there's a lot of search engines in there that you can get into, and, but that's one of them that he had set up uh, through the library homepage. Yeah. 
No, he goes in through internet, through the uh, library homepage. Okay. Did you have a question? Oh, I thought you were holding your hand up. <laughs> you still stretching after a long day in the car, too, like me. <clears throat> Those uh, miles get longer after a little bit. Okay. That's it. There's no other questions there? Or I'll hold that one. Like I told you a moment ago, they got a sheet of paper. remember about the library. Might make you think a little more. Of the ones we mentioned, what's the next most valuable resource to you? Those of you who are fast, I'll put up the next one. And then one automated data resource for each of the areas of agriculture, business, education, and technology. Yeah, good memory. Okay. Okay. Okay.
about a minute to finish guessing. order. It's easier to do that on the PowerPoint. What's one resource for agriculture? Automated? Agricola? Cab? A bunch of others, but that Agricola is one most people will probably remember. Any of that list would be fine for that one. How about business? ABI Inform? Probably the one most people will remember. Any of that list. Education. Everybody should have gotten there. <laughs> That's a given. <laughs> Technology. Headline count. Uh, Technology Index, Applied Technology Index is one. There's a bunch of them in that list, too. Is just any of those that are in that list. Contrasting RIE and CIJE, RIE is all those documents other than journal articles. And CIJE is journal articles, more than 800 source journals. RIE you can get in a microfiche in a microform room. The journal articles you have to go to the journals themselves. Those are the two main things. Actually, both, well, yeah, our RIE sources are the clearinghouses, right? And, of course, the journal sources would be the journal. Who is Eric? Educational Resources Information Center. Next most valuable resource, whatever you put down. <laughs> it's most valuable to you, right? <laughs> so there's no wrong answer on that one. And everybody should have gotten the first one. Librarian. Okay, put the, let's see, how many of the possible seven points on it? Put their score up to the top and hand them back to them. Tell them they did a good job. Where's my timekeeper? we got to take a break. Right? Alice is telling us. <laughs> I'll take questions from my distance audience if anybody's got them. Yes, we'd better go around the circle. How about Tulsa? Okay. 
Pharaoh may not have any of that okay too. He's their silent out there tomorrow. We went with experience. And observation. Okay, we've got experience and observation. Now, let's go to uh, OKC and back and vote on seven that was given me later, but uh, if you have ones that are different than the ones that were given me, let me have those. So how about OKC? The only other one I can come up with that's new is there isn't a single one. It takes a combination. <laughs> oh, but I'm forcing you this time. You have to think of one single one. <laughs> You, you, you've got to move to one single one. Can't come up with another one? Okay, how about old Muggy? I will say experience. Okay, any different than this, you're going to choose experience also. Yes. How about uh, OT Altry? There it is. There. Finally. No, we do not have any other ones after much deliberation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will come to the classroom now. And over here in the left, if I can get my camera around to them. What uh, did you all have? Reason. All right, there's a different one. You can mark the other side. Well, I'm going to give you a chance there in a minute. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can move. Whoop, wrong direction. How about the group there in the back? Experience and reason. Okay, so you're with the same ones, right? Okay, what was the unique approach? Come up here and talk into this mic on that one. <laughs> they want me to repeat it, and I can't repeat that one. Come up here and give this one a mic. <laughs>
again. Okay, we'll go to the middle group now. That's you. <laughs> Practitioner, okay. That's a different one. I don't think I can spell it, but anyway, it's... Uh, <clears throat> How do you spell practitioner? <laughs> I O N E R. I thought that didn't look right. <laughs> the I O N E R. Okay. I have a an English teacher here that says that's correct. Is that right? <laughs> okay, and now I'm moving right on around the circle. change your mind. I want you to commit yourself. <laughs> Only one. See, that's the hard part, is narrowing it down to one. But that's what I want to force you to do. Choose the one that you think is most reliable. You have them chosen? So we've got two there. Oh, three, four. <clears throat> Had two latecomers there. All right, now about reason. Got one, two, three, four, five in the classroom. Reason. No more late folks there. Four, nine. <laughs> I think we had a couple of double votes there, didn't we? 
practitioner. Got practitioner one, two, two in the classroom. Any more votes out there? One, there's three. I think some of those Oklahoma City people are voting for the people that are back in the other classroom. Because, see, they've got another classroom there, too, that uh, they can't talk to us. <laughs> or they would really have the votes. Okay, so practitioner is three. Yeah, how about uh, oops, scientific method? Okay, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. <laughs> I don't know whether he was stretching or voting. <laughs> They're voting for the people in the other classroom. <laughs> okay, there's another one too. Okay, so we got about 11 there too, depending on how many voted in the other classroom at OKC. Now, any others you want to add to the list? Uh, Talca. Talca. Intuition. Intuition. And it's the real. Intuition. That's one vote. <laughs> All right. Autry Tech would like to record one vote for common sense. Common sense, okay.
Jeff. Also didn't listen. Because some people you gotta speak over the microphone. Okay. How's that, Tulsa? <clears throat> Experience is real, it's something that you do uh, from an administrative standpoint, you do every day. You learn through your experiences and the, the activities that you're involved in. Um, and I feel like that's the most reliable. Because when next, we've got about time for about two more on experience. You want to speak? How about out there in TV land? Who wants to speak for experience? I was a single vote in Tulsa for experience. I felt that with the uh, experience you have experience through observation, experience through reason, as well as applying scientific methods that will uh, that will validate your experience or your uh, personal experiences and how you apply them to certain situations. Good. Yeah. Time for one more. Who wants to put the clincher on? Because remember, the opponents are coming up next, and they're going to explain why it's not. Who's next? One more. Those opponents are just chomping at the bit to tell you why it's not. Where's my OKC bunch that voted for that one? No experience performance. <laughs> They're silent. <laughs> okay, how about the opponents? Why, come on up. Why is experience not the most reliable? Dr. Key, uh, this is Charlie Hayes at Puddle. Can you hear me now? Okay, I've been trying to trying to call you. Is my site cycling through? Yes, you are. Okay, I've been trying to talk to you and I haven't been able to get through it all. Well, I had thought I was, but I about forgot what I had to say after all this. <laughs> yeah, it's experience, right? <laughs> I just wanted to—I I just wanted to be able to put, have a little input while ago, and I couldn't get through. Uh, and and uh, I didn't know if you had counted my vote on experience because uh, every, it seems like every uh, everything you do is going to relate back to experience one way or another, uh, even if you research and and. Uh, the tools that you uh, send out is going to be through other people's experiences, so uh, it usually comes back to that one way or another. Very good. Thanks for keeping after it. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry. I'm probably behind. Somebody's probably already said something, but I've, I've been on the phone trying to get uh, just get through to you. Good. I'm glad you kept after it. We'll make this stuff work yet. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Now we, now we have an opponent. Okay, the problem with experiences are that you bring your own personal biases, values, issues, interpretations, past experiences to them. Perfect example I can think of is those of you who are married, which is another experience in and of itself. Pick a date that you can remember and that you can discuss with other people. Maybe four or five, six years ago in the past. You write down your that experience. Your spouse do the same and see how much they get. And they will. Very good. <laughs> Another op opponent says it's not. There we go.
I'm Kevin Hopkins. Uh, experiences are, like this gentleman just pointed out, relative, not only relative uh, depending upon perspective, but also relative depending upon uh, your worldview. A person in a different part of the world will have a vastly different experience base than you and I will have. And uh, so, though there's a great deal of knowledge to be learned from experience, and though it's a very good source of knowledge uh, to base our, uh, our studies or, or to consider it the most important or the most authoritative source of knowledge, breaks down pretty quickly because no one has all the same experiences. And so it's uh, subject to a lot of variance. Time for one more. Dr. Keeley, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. Go ahead. Um, the Navy side of my experience is number one. You have limited resources, which is only the individual. You do have your own prejudices and biases that can distort the experience that you have. You also have limited ability because you can't re rely on anyone else. And it is the self-reliance that causes the, the crippling effect on the experience. Once again, you only have that single individual and the limited information and knowledge that they have to use experience as your most reliable source of information. <laughs> you, you had a fan here that gave you a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, this is good. Now you presented both sides very well on this. What's next? Let's take a look at observation and then we'll hit reason. We'll only be able to hit uh, observation, reason, and scientific method due to time, but uh, be thinking about those. So let's go to observation next. Who are my proponents of observation? Who wants to speak for observation? <coughs> oh, no, you got something else planned, right? Nobody wants to speak for observation? Well, we can move to reason next, then. Who would like to speak for reason? Reason is a source of information based on uh, logic, which uh, com primarily consists of uh, uh, deductive thinking and inductive thinking. Even though deductive thinking and uh, inductive thinking have uh, their limitations, I think they can uh, comparatively provide reliable knowledge, re uh, reliable information. By the way, give me your name. I keep forgetting your name. My name is. It's Ying Jie is my first name, Dong is my family name. Yes. Yeah. 
faulty reasoning and logic, but I went with that. Because if you have succeeded using correct re reasoning and appropriate logic, your study can be easily duplicated by someone else following basically the same criteria. Very good. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, my opponents now have time for about three. Those that don't think reason is the most reliable. You mean everybody thinks it is the most reliable? No opponents? I, I think I can shoot some holes in it. <laughs> Matter of fact, I will in the rest of the lesson. <laughs> Tell us, what was 
was that again? I just wanted to challenge Joe when he was talking about uh, doing his scientific method if that applied to Darwin and his theory of evolution. <laughs> you mean, what, has it been replicated? Well, using logic and reason and, and uh, being able to prove it, and the, yeah, and replicate it, how they've been able to trace the different uh, species of man through evolution. <laughs> okay, any other about <laughs> Any others out there or here? Going, going, because we're about to become a pumpkin. We have to change tapes with the half hour. <laughs> so our timing. Okay, let me summarize. But before I uh, get there to summarize, let me get back down. So you can see me a little better, maybe. As we look at these sources, and there are others, as you know, uh, even in our manual we've said that there's experience, reason, we talked about those two. We didn't talk about authority, but authority is a good source of information sometimes. Because if a person is recognized as an authority, that means there are probably a lot of people <coughs> that give that person recognition that they really know something about that particular a revelation, didn't get into that one, but revelation is that there is information that would come from a higher power. That may be a higher power of different names by different religions and so forth, but most people believe in sources of information from a higher power. So that one is another, perhaps, very strong source of reliable information, but then you can shoot at it from the other side of the uh, one and say, well, is it reliable uh, if it's tested over time? And that's the way revelations from higher power is usually tested. Was it the way the prophets tested it back there? Uh, intuition. We had a group that tossed that one out and always had a lot of fun with that one because can get into uh, a lot of trouble in a hurry you go to the intuition route because a lot of times the female gender claims intuition more than the male does but uh, that again can be a very strong source of information common sense uh, out here in the wild west as you call it common sense or horse sense as they call it sometimes was very strong as a source of information so there are others as well. But as we're talking about these, each one, we have been able to have the support in saying, yes, this will allow the source of information. But on the other hand, Ruby says, but on the other hand, one, we're also able to show that each has its weakness. We can show where standing alone, and I made you choose one for a reason, because if you choose the one over another, each one has its strength and each one. Uh, comment back here, if I can get the camera back around to you. Go ahead. He's hiding behind her book now. <laughs> and that's a part. Very good point. That, and I'll make her point again so you can hear it. Uh, that in reality, we don't depend on one. We depend on more than one. And that also makes the point that I'm trying to make in research. What do we use for our sources of information? Yeah, 
all of these in one way or another. But do we recognize that yes, they are good reliable sources of information, but on the other hand, we also have to be careful and test those sources to make sure they're reliable and that they've given us good information. And that's why the people that chose the scientific method are taking steps to do that. And the scientific method isn't perfect either, but it is a systematic, step-by-step -step way of trying to get the best information we can get. So you did a good job of thinking through these. You thought of those strengths of each one, and you thought of the weaknesses of each one. And so as we do our research, let's keep that in mind. Yes, we want to use each one of these, the best of them. But we also want to test the information they get from them so that we are sure we do have the best information. I'll give you an A for effort and an A for the thinking you did on thinking through that. Now, when we come back break, and we'll take a break now, we will talk about how do we use logic. We'll go into a little more depth in deduction and induction, a little on the scientific method, and we'll see if we can get out of here a little early, if we can get those accomplished pretty quick. So let's take our break. take a look at each one of these and use an example to show you what we mean by a categorical, hypothetical, alternative, or disjunctive syllogism. So if you haven't copied those down, don't worry, we'll be coming back to them one by one. I'm going to make sure that that one was like I thought it was. If we hadn't corrected it. Here is a categorical syllogism. Now I'll show you what we mean by the limitations as well as the strengths. So see, we must know that all crows are black before we can use this as a source of information. We must know that this bird is black before we can use it in our analysis. Then we can come up, if both of those are true, and if they're absolutely true, we come up with true knowledge as our conclusion, which is this bird's a crow. But we can't go beyond what we already know there. 
we have to know that all crows are black, we have to know this bird is black, and then that will give us the conclusion that this bird is a crow. Correct? This bird may be a crow? Oh, you're going even beyond what I... <laughs> okay. Why is this bird maybe a crow? Other black birds. Well, yeah, but... Um, hmm. Okay. Now, let's go to the major premise, the first one. All crows are black. Do we agree? With maybe an exception of an albino. Okay. There are always perhaps one or two minor exceptions. But for the major part, and, and for some of you that may not be familiar with crows, crows is that huge black bird that goes call, call, call out there in the pastures and in the cornfields or around the United States. So it's, and some of you may know uh, a cousin who is the raven, but uh, crow's a big black bird, okay? But now, so all crows are black. We'll, we'll more or less agree that that, which is our major premise, is correct. Okay. This bird is black. I got this bird sitting right up here on the desk. And this is black as the ace of space, so it's black. Is that not correct? Okay. Then you're arguing with my conclusion? Why? What's wrong with our deductive syllogism? What's wrong with our deductive syllogism? Okay. All black birds are not crows. <laughs> All black birds are not crows. Yeah, okay. How do we fix it then? If we say that all crows are black. Oops, just ran off. Okay. Where do we go from there? See what? Identifying that bird. How are we going to do that? Okay, look back at the syllogism. What's wrong with it? What makes it incorrect? <laughs> okay. All right, let's fix it that way. All crows are black. Oops. Wrong count. This bird... Is what? Right. Therefore, our conclusion is <laughs> that's true. This black bird must be a crow. <laughs> okay, all clothes crows are black. This bird is a crow. on our categorical syllogism that this bird is black because think back and what happened to us and the reason we got into this problem and if you look on page 54 in the uh, syllabus you'll see that we have M which is this part of it and P which is this part and then we have S back to M, and then we are to S and to P. Do we have an organization for our syllogism? And if it is not in that organization, you figured it out because you said, hey, that just doesn't make sense logically. But if the organization is not correct for your syllogism, it's not correct either. So there are three things that must be correct in deduction to make you have a true conclusion.
and that is major premise must be absolutely true, minor premise must be true, and it must be organized correctly. And a categorical syllogism has to be the M P S M S P. If the M is pro, P is black, and the S has to be in that order in order to be correct. Now, if you were a student of logic, you go into these order and you go into a lot more of this development and so forth, which we don't have time to do in this class, but just remember that logic has an order to it. And that our deductive syllogism has to have that order in order to make them logical. Okay, let's look at some other types of syllogisms. So remember this one is what type? Categorical. And we have, we have purposely put it on there incorrectly to make the point that you remember it must have the correct order as well as the major and minor premises being correct. Right? Let's look at a hypothetical. A good way to think of a hypothetical one is an if-then statement. If the building is on fire, we're in danger. The building is on fire. Therefore, we're in danger. If then. It's a good way to remember hypothetical. Alternative? Either one or the other. Either I'll pass the test or I'll flunk the course. I'll not pass the test. Therefore, I'll flunk the course. So you can think of alternative as an either or. These are some of the more common types of deductive reasoning that we use in everyday life and in research. Put things in categories. We think of things like hypothetical. See, that's where our hypotheses come from in scientific methods. And we think of alternatives. Not testing. These alternatives. And we may even use disjunctive. And disjunctive is, is simply saying it can't be both at once. It's kind of like an either or, but you turn it around. It can't both be a rainy day and a good day for a picnic. Rainy day, so therefore it is not a good day for a picnic. It's kind of going backwards at the either or. <laughs> but it's called a disjunctive. Now remember, deductive reasoning, it's great. We've got to have it. We've got to use it. But its limitation is we can't discover any new information. It's got to deal with the information we already know. So how do we get beyond what we already know? Right. We get beyond what we already know through induction. What is induction? We said that uh, deduction is general to specific and the basis of mathematics. What's induction? Specific to general, right? And the basis of statistics, correct. And what other thing is a, is that's good then if it's the basis? we deal with all the time, and you heard all the time. I'll build a sample. We'll come back to that. Okay, so induction, specific to journal, basis of is statistics, or basis of statistics. It expands knowledge with varying degrees of probability. Now think about that last time. Man's knowledge with varying degrees of probability. Why can't it be perfect information?
Say that again. <laughs> Your sample what? Repeat what you said, for you uh, that you have to sample because you can't measure the population most of the time. And if you sample, then you don't have perfect information because in order to have perfect information, you got to have a measure of the total population. This is very true. You can get hold hold on. Come back around. Whoa, we'll come back around here. There we go. You getting dizzy? <laughs> Try that again. Okay. Yeah, that's a different than the probability. Uh, okay, let's let's get some that might help us with our randomness. So see, randomness, what is a random sample? What? That 
chance, but what's the basis of a random sample? What's the logic behind it? Yes, each individual or each object within the population has an equal chance of being chosen in the sample. That's the basis of a random sample. It must be an equal chance for each individual or member of that population to be chosen for that sample. Otherwise, we don't have the basis for measuring the confidence that we place that that sample is represented. Okay, so that's one way. Now, we can apply a little logic to randomness to help us make even more representative sample if we know things about our population. For instance, take the state of Oklahoma. The agriculture is different in the different quadrants of the state. The northwest is different than the southeast, northeast different than the southwest, and so forth. If we were going to sample farms within Oklahoma, logically, in addition to randomness, what are we going to do? We'll make sure that those quadrants are represented. Well, hang on. We'll go to that one next. <laughs> He's one step ahead of me. <laughs> We're going to make sure they're represented. What's that called? Stratification. So that'll be a stratified random sampling, we're making sure that the differences with, that we already know are there are represented. Now, he said something else about that representation. Supposing there are more farms in the southeast than there are in the northwest, which is true. Are we going to need to weight it proportionally? So now we're to a proportional stratified random sample. So we're allowing logic about which we have some information to help us get more representation from our sample. So as we're sampling, we try to use the best information we've got to help us get the most representation in our sample. <laughs> Don't even. Oh, don't even get into that one. He's starting to go political on us here. <laughs> oh, we haven't got time to get into that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but that's true. A representative government. <laughs> okay. Now, we've got two methods of logic. Each one builds on the other. Get new information, we use induction. To give us the relations in that information, we use deduction. Each one builds on the other. Because one without the other is not complete. We go one step further. In our steps of the uh, back up. Perfect induction, just to give you an example. On our crow example, I observed every crow in Oklahoma to determine if they were black. <clears throat> the imperfect is I, I observed a representative sample. Now, when we go to the scientific method, what we do here is we combine induction and deduction, but we also combine <clears throat> other forms of logic. The very first one is probably one of the most important, and that's the next thing in your assignment, is to define your problem. And you have to think of the difficulty, and you have to consider what the difficulty is, but the biggest part of designing a research study is making sure you understand what the problem is. You can directly identify and define that problem you're halfway started on your research way the way you need to. So it's based upon the definition of that problem, which also 
in defining the problem and includes your reviewing the literature. That's one of the big ways to define a problem. Find out what other people have said, written, and done about it. If not, you may not understand the problem. Then you form your hypotheses. You use induction to form your hypotheses. You're gathering new information there. You're gathering, you're thinking through what if. Then you need to take your deductive reasoning to think through, okay, if this is true, then you go through your conclusion. Once you get to those conclusions, then you gather information to test those conclusions and test those hypotheses. Once you test your hypotheses, then you can finally reject it. The scientific method is simply taking a systematic approach and using the best of our logic, the best of our sources of information to help us create the best answers that we can for making decisions. Now it uses induction. Mm -hmm. It uses both induction and deduction. So you should be gathering new information, but you should also be taking that new information and trying to subject it to the best of the deductive logic to give you the truth from that new information. That's what we're trying to do is come up with truth. Action. I got another assignment for you. I'll remind you of the assignments that are printed in here, and then I'll give you another one. Well, actually, somebody said we've got three assignments for next week. Number one assignment for next week, printed in your syllabus, is you have a critique that's due. If any of you've got them tonight, we'll be glad to read them early. Save our eyes the following week a little bit. Second one is, which is printed, come up with the title, very tentative perhaps at this point, title or topic of your thesis, dissertation, or creative component. We're going to use those next week. We're going to discuss them. Those are the two major ones, but I've got a third assignment for you. This one will be a fun one. Especially if you're watching a football game or something like that on TV, because I want you to watch TV. But the fun part of it is you get to watch TV that you never watch. You can't get up and go get the popcorn. You can't get up and go to the John. I want you to watch the commercial. And I want you to look at those commercials for the way they use logic. Believe me, they use them in an unbelievable manner sometimes. <laughs> what I want you to do is I want you to look for a deductive syllogism. And I want you to identify whether they used it like I did that crow one first, incorrectly, or if they used it correctly. Was it true? Or was it not true because they used it incorrectly? for one of the three reasons. They may not have a true major premise, they may not have a true minor premise, or they may have reorganized it a little bit. And then I want you to look for an inductive illustration. There's lots of those out there. Just think about the one of the deodorants in the locker rooms. When you do locker rooms and they sample. <laughs> okay, inductive. And tell me that, again, was this a good inductive argument? Did they use it correctly? Did they come up with a representative sample if they sampled? Or did they measure the total population? Five out of ten doctors recommended. How many doctors? Just jot them down. 
we'll discuss them in class. You don't have to turn them in. But I want you to try to come up with one of each. Tell me whether it's correct or incorrect, true or untrue, and why. While you're watching, while we're thinking about this logic, and we haven't talked about this tool of logic, but we will be talking about it some. I want you to look for the most used tool of logic that the advertiser uses. There's one tool they use more than any other. Any questions over critiques, uh, <clears throat> your topics or titles for your studies? Anything up to this point? First t critique is a thesis or a dissertation because that fits the format and it's much easier for you to do it on that first one. If you don't have a, that as a source and you do have a journal, you may do it, but it's better for you to do the other. Any questions? Any questions from TV land? If not, it's going to be Orange Peel weekend here. We have a question at uh, Tulsa. Go ahead, Tulsa. We did. Can we just send our critiques by courier, the, bring it on Tuesday night and send it by courier for the next day, or do you want it beforehand? Uh, you may send it uh, Tuesday night by courier. Okay, thank you. You bet. And also, you can send yours by Dr. Duggar or Dr. McClure. Back to the Give me the best way you can. <laughs> Email. Jerry, is Mail, mail. Good evening. This is the Green Team with the DOT. Just kind of do you talk, do your presentation. Why don't start out with I don't want to press it. <laughs> Sectionary design, presentation by the Green Team. Do my presentation September 10th, section 97. I'm not going to do it. I'm not ready yet. Might as well start reading. Come on. What am I going to read? Well, what are you going to read? That's what I'm figuring out right now. Read it out. Okay. Just read it out. I mean, I'm not ready yet. Okay. I just want to know if the 